G'day everyone, welcome back to another video with Medieval Mayhem. My name is Ben. Today I thought we'd do something with this. So I was actually around at a friend's house just recently and they had got in a bunch of these and these are really cool. So I bought a few of them from my friend and I thought we'd have a go at making some horn products. These are really cool. Horn products have been used in ancient civilizations for probably 30,000 or more years, like they go back a long way. We know they've been used as drinking vessels, as sounding horns, trumpets, that kind of thing. There's all sorts of different reasons that people have them. Yeah, I just thought, let's, just, let's have a go and make one. So these are raw horns. They've not been touched or processed in any way, shape or form. They've simply been cut off the animal when it was butchered. So the first thing that we're gonna do is clean it. Now you can possibly see there's a whole lot of dirt and grime and probably a lot of other stuff lying around on the outside coating of this. So that's all going to come off and then on the inside it's not bad but sometimes these can get really kind of disgusting with deposits of, of all sorts of stuff. At the end of the day this is a biological thing so the most important thing I can do right now is clean that as well. So let's do that. All right, so cleaning this down just with a very gentle detergent, no big deal, no harsh chemicals or anything. And you can see quite quickly that all of those built up deposits are starting to come off pretty well. That's fantastic. All right, that's come up really well. Around this top edge, it's a little bit more stubborn to remove. I'm gonna sand this back anyway, so it's not the big deal. And I'm gonna trim this top section back too. This pretty much holds water really well, so I'm very happy with that. I'm going to seal the inside with beeswax, but before I get to that, I'm going to clean out the inside too. As I say, there's a lot of debris and stuff in there, so I just want to clean that out. And so I'm just using like a bottle brush thing, just to give the inside a really good clean. Now I'm just giving that a good rinse out. Alright, so we're all clean, which is fantastic. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to cure the inside and there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but I'm going to use vodka. And what you have to do is allow the vodka to sit for seven days. Well that's, that's how long I'm leaving mine. So this was pretty much the cheapest vodka I could find. Really not that expensive. That's pretty much at the top, which is fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is just leave that and let the vodka do its thing. Right, so our tankard is now, we've all cleaned and cured on the inside. The next job we've got to do is we've got to sand this back. As you can see, there's some gouges and whatnot. This has all been left. This was an inexpensive horn, but um, I'm gonna have to do the processing to get rid of these gouges, which are in there naturally, especially things like this. The horn itself is quite thick, and then, um, so we'll just tidy that up. When you're working on a horn like this, the particles absolutely stink, and there's just nothing you can do to get around it. I have to sand all this back with, obviously, an orbital sander, so, Eye protection to keep the grit out of your eyes, hearing protection, and a mask. So everything's now sanded down. It's actually super, super smooth and it's just looking really amazing. I've drawn on with a Sharpie, kind of a tree of Gondor. I'm not the world's best artist, but hey, it looks okay. And because um, this is like 22 years since Peter Jackson released Fellowship of the Ring. So I thought, oh, you know what? Let's do a few Lord of the Rings themed videos. So uh, what we're gonna now do is carve this Couple of quick notes on carving. You definitely need ear protection, you definitely need eye protection and breathing protection. And if you can, do this outside. So I'm gonna do this in my front yard 
where the Dremel and just carve out where the tree is. Uh, that takes a little while. You have to be very careful not to go through the horn because there's obviously no coming back from that. Uh, and then um, we'll give it a quick little buff up and a, and a polish again and, uh, and we'll trim it down and see what happens from there. That's the kind of shape we're looking for. Still quite soft, so you gotta wait for that to cool off. So this little wooden plug now is very close to fitting. All we've got to do is just heat this bottom section up. It's very close, but we're not quite there yet. now got a perfect fit along the bottom this is so good I was a bit worried about this this could have gone a bit wrong if the horns gonna split that's it it's done and I'm gonna have to start again and I didn't want to do that so I'm so happy we've got a nice tight fit and it is such a great fit it's really quite amazing let's see how that comes up I just decided to hold the base in place with these little pin nails I decided to coat the inside of my drinking horn with beeswax. There's a whole bunch of different alternatives you can use. You can try pine resin and that kind of thing. But I came to the conclusion that for me beeswax was the preferred option. It's cheaper, it's more available, it's easier to use. Uh, and that's, it's just what I'm experiencing so I decided to go with that. I use a double boiler method, that means that I have a small, this is basically a soup can I think, uh, and that goes inside the um, saucepan. It's a lot safer this way, um, and it means that you don't get beeswax coating your saucepans, which is a bad thing. 
It takes a few minutes for the beeswax to melt. It's not very expensive though. I found um, beeswax is, is, is very kind of economical and it's very easy to get hold of. There's heaps of people around where I live that sell beeswax just as it is um, on Marketplace. That's fantastic. So that's where I'm going. All right, let's um, give this a couple of minutes and it'll be ready to go. Interestingly, the color of beeswax will change depending on what the bees have been feeding on, how well hydrated they are, uh, weather conditions such as temperature, all of that kind of thing, the stress levels to, uh, that they're under based on things like availability of food, predation, that kind of thing. All right, once you've got your beeswax at a good temperature, it's melted, it's nice and clear, not got like lumpy bits in there, then what I'm gonna do is put some gloves on to protect my hands. Just give that a little shake and then we're just gonna basically go from one container to the next. You need to do this pretty consistently, otherwise the beeswax can cool and then that'll leave lumps and stuff inside your drinking horn, which you don't really want. So let's give this a go. And I'm gonna do that like uh, a couple of times, four or five times. Heat that back up again and you're trying to get an even distribution in the drinking horn. Now if you do get some spill onto the horn which is almost inevitable it will just wipe off it's not a big deal. The last step what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some boiled linseed oil to the outside and this is just going to help keep it nice. I would actually suggest oiling your horn um, <laughs> but that's what it is. Uh, about once a year or so And just also wiping off any of the excess wax that's good in there. Otherwise this has come out freaking fantastic. Really happy with that. I've never done anything like this before. So, so stoked with my first attempt. Now we've got some more horn products that are coming out in video over the next sort of few weeks. But Oh, look at that. That's so good. And how good is this? Like, absolutely. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. And this has come out absolutely just so well. You could easily do a project like this. It would take you probably about two weeks total with an input of maybe half an hour a day, if that. Um, because bear in mind, the whole week of this is the vodka just sitting in there. Uh, other than that, it's great. Couple of quick pointers. Um, I would say with linseed oil, don't forget it can spontaneously combust, so be really careful with that. Um, use a double boiler when you do the beeswax. That's just the safest way to do it. Uh, other than that, this is just a great project. And I'm so impressed. Leave a comment below if you guys have tried something like this. How did it work out for you? I'd love to know. Um, we're so excited. There's so much content coming out at the moment. We're putting out shorts just about every day, several times a week at the very minimum. New videos coming out every week. Uh, this is really good. We've got so much planned and so much coming out for you guys uh, throughout 24, 25. This is gonna be an amazing few years. We're so excited. Can't wait to see you in my next video. Until then though, please like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to um, click the notification bell. And I will see you in my next video.